What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Roleplaying Unlimited. Uh, a little quick fix here. Hey, there I am, buried underneath the window layer. Just gonna run some quick uh, tutorials here for the Roll20 engine for new players, players looking for a refresher, etc., and so on. <sighs> I don't know, I think I should turn music down even further. Yeah, I'm not really... <clears throat> the voice is not really here with me today. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so for this, I'm going to craft a new game. Show you all what goes into this process if you're ever looking at crafting a game of your own. Eh, looks like I've kind of cut off the uh, the window here too. Oh well. So create a game, give it the name that you want. You can go right into care, uh, game creation from there. Uh, for myself, if uh, we're playing D and D five e. I prefer the 5e e by Roll20 sheet. I used to prefer... You can see all the different character sheet options in here for... Uh, not any system you want to play, but there's a lot of options. <clears throat> there is a... What they call the 5e shaped sheet, which... I think is uh, superior on a few levels to the standard Roll20 sheet, but after using it a number of times through campaigns, it didn't mesh entirely well with uh, the compendium, and especially for spellcasters, I had players losing spells off of their sheets repeatedly, so we went to the, uh, the plain Roll20 sheet, which... It's not flashy, it's not the, uh, the prettiest looking sheet, but it gets the job done. You can see here, different features uh, available. Yep, yep, yep. Different modules if you want to purchase one of those to uh, run a pre-made. I do have uh, the Marvel role-playing game playtest rulebook. We were supposed to play last October, I want to say, and <laughs> it just did not work out, scheduling, planning, all that. In any case, creating the game, uh, of course, invite players if you want, token marker sets. I have found it helpful to uh, status effect icons, and side quest battle maps status markers the earth dawn fourth edition toker token marker set i got for free i believe for being a pro <laughs> subscriber to roll 20 uh, the other two i purchased maybe five bucks per pack but they do add a lot of uh interesting icons for your players to use if you've played in any of my games and <clears throat> you open up the icon menu you could definitely kind of see what's uh what the case is with that. All right, so launching game. This is how you get into the game itself. If you are playing any of our open table games and you've received the Roll Twenty link invite, you're not going to get really anywhere from the previous page. You could feasibly open up the journal and maybe do character creation, although I don't even think that's an option. So you always want to launch game to get into everything that you have access to. Uh, one thing I like to do, they do have their video and what have you turned on by default. So, audio and video, chat tech, I just turned that off completely. It does a page reload while it uh, adjusts all of those formats. What's going on? <clears throat> Drug Pally, good to see you there, brother. And then same thing, we can see how... Actually, we can't because I cut the page off. But 
Maybe like uh, an entire section about this size would be occupied by a, a single player avatar. And especially once you get five or six players on the board, you might be looking at this much table space in total that you're losing just looking at the players that are involved in the game. So back to the gear icon. I need to fix this just one second. It looked better from the home page, but not so much from here. So da -da 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 fit to screen. That's better. So now we can kind of see everything. And we can see my avatar as well taking up all this uh, valuable real estate. So uh oops. Uh, da, 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 da. Gonna have to move myself out of the way here. There we go, so we can see exactly what's happening here. And yeah, we're gonna need to open up all the way, top and bottom. Fit this to the screen again. Okay. Uh, you can change your uh, display name per campaign. Roleplaying Unlimited is my display name for all campaigns, although sometimes you'll see me in a campaign as FET, Narrator, etc. Especially Agent Orange, you'll see Narrator a lot more often. So back to the avatar right here. Now just imagine there's six players and that's approximately a third of your entire tabletop space. I mean, you can zoom it out, but the avatar doesn't really change size, so it's still taking up the same amount of real estate. So you go to your your gear icon, and goodness gracious, bodacious, I just cannot get this running today. All right, try that, fit that to screen. Okay, now you should be able to see everything. Gear icon is selected, which brings up this menu here. This is typically where you're gonna start in the chat log, gear icon. Scroll down, audio video, video display, player video and avatar size. I change that to names only, and just like that, we now have plenty of space to work with. You can click the color next to your avatar, brings up this color menu here. I tend to choose white, it's not going to, uh, be the best on this background here so we'll do a brief map editor here this is not entirely necessary for players but this is what you're looking at for the map editor you can set the height and width of each page you can determine how many feet meters kilometers miles inches centimeters custom whatever each square happens to represent you can also change to a hex grid or an isometric or diametric Typically, I just go with the tried and true squares, five feet per square. Although, <clears throat> what I like to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, is uh, I change the background to black. It just, uh, it kind of pops a little bit better, especially if you, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. As you kind of come to create your own maps and stuff, you'll, you'll learn your own little shortcuts. But, uh, little shortcut there hold down your left clicker for a second you'll get this ping if you are the game master of the game you can hold down the shift key and hit the ping and notice how it kind of redirects the screen to that spot it does that for everybody that's in your game so it's a good way to force everybody's direction uh, to one area or another or if you have a map that's 90% unexplored and the players are like I can't see anything and you know there's this tiny little pocket that they're probably trying to scroll and look for just do that ping and it forces everybody there you're good to go all right so into the crux of it now uh, uh, I don't know I'm realizing my mistake here so that was a, a fun little tutorial they're just creating that page, but I'm actually going to need to go into... Let's say... Where in the world is... Enemir, there it is. First step, reimagined. Going in there. 
Ay, cha, 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 cha. La -di -da -di -da. Oh, we do not want that to be seen. Whoop! <laughs> that was close. Uh, it's the danger. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I can only share my Roll20 compendium with five campaigns, which five campaigns sounds like a lot while well, I'm running five games at the same time right now, so all of those slots are occupado. Hence the reason I need to go into an existing game to craft uh, a new character sheet. Don't worry about the Tarask. It's a... Uh, it's harmless. It won't hurt you. Okay, so I am going to add a new character sheet, and this is what I do for every player that is joining any game. I add the character sheet, I change the name to their actual name or their avatar name. I start it off accessible by all players so they can at least see that this character exists and then can be edited and controlled by what I would do is choose any one of the players let's say this is Sean's character sheet but then I also add myself to the edited and controlled by this is because I am streaming live and I'm streaming the player view onto the live stream so I need to make sure that I have editorial control over every character sheet so that I can see through their vision. You'll see that numerous times throughout the streams. I'm like, oh, it looks like I lost so-and-so's vision, and then I have to reset it, and then the map just kind of illustrates a new section. Now, in this case, let's uh, take Sean Daly off because he's not actually going to have control of this character, and I don't want to confuse him with, hey, who's this uh, Daniel I'm playing? Because I think Sean's middle name is Daniel, so uh, could be very confusing. Almost always, use the Character Mancer. You, uh, no player should ever really need to create an NPC unless you have a familiar or a hireling. And even in that case, I probably have a pre-made something that I can just drag onto the sheet for you. If you're editing sheet directly, it's because you are importing character information over from a d and Beyond, from a... Uh, a pen and paper character sheet or any number of other avenues that you might have used to craft your character but as we'll see here using the character mancer is going to be the most effective and uh, quickest way for us to get our character playable uh, play ready Alrighty, back to this. So welcome to the Character Mancer, a step-by-step -step process that makes building a character simple and streamlined. Changes are saved as you progress, but the character sheet is only updated once the Character Mancer has been completed. Your compendium awaits. The Character Mancer currently supports a vast collection of compendium content from a variety of publishers. Before you proceed, check with your GM to ensure They've set the proper compendium sharing settings in your game settings. I've had issues with this before, but Open Table Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Edomir, First Step Reimagined, and Acilia. All five of these games have access to the, uh, goodness. Uh, uh I'm easily distracted. Uh, they all have access to the compendium. Uh, be sure to check out the Roll20 Marketplace or D&D 5e Compendium to see all the products that have the Compendium expansions. There's a ton of them, and we'll kind of go over that here in a bit, if it's even really necessary. So next, I am choosing the race of the character. Uh, you may ignore your ability score increase trait and instead assign ability score increases tailored to your character. Um, I love this song. A little bit extra on that. Okay. Uh, I've never actually used this customized origin. I actually don't use the character mancer a lot, so this is a handy little refresher for myself. So opening this up, we can see all of the race options that, uh, well, uh, I, 
guess not. I can see that my arrow is moving up and down, but it doesn't look like you all can see the options that have opened up. That's very strange. Okay, well, uh, suffice it to say, I guess, that when you click this, choose a race, at least select an item the list, I'm trying. There's like 40 something options in here. Some of them are doubled up too, like Tabaxi, there's multiple versions of them, there's multiple versions of Orcs, Kenku, um, what else? Azamar. Azamar's got three different versions. One from the Volo's Guide, one from the DMG, and one from uh, the Explorer's Guide to Wildmont. So, in those instances, I'm not picky as far as the open tables are concerned. Uh, whichever one you want to play, it's just essentially two people can be playing different versions of Azamar, and that's totally fine. In uh, the more serious campaigns, uh, Enemir game namely, uh, I try to have a set standard as far as which of those we're choosing between unless there's an actual in-game narrative that kind of explains uh, the differences between the sames, I should say. Okay, so, I mean, we got so many options here. We got Shades, we got Shifters, Tabaxis, Tieflings, Tortles, Warforged, Yontees, Goliaths, Goblins, Gnomes, Dwarves, Elves, Furbolgs, Bugbears. I think for tutorial we will go with the classic human, which for some reason is hard to find. Oh, there it is. Alright, so I have selected a human. There we go. So now that information pops up. You can see all of the information here that you would find in the player's handbook. I believe this is copied verbatim. And this is all using Forgotten Realms uh, regional humans. So if you're talking about like Shu and Rashimi and Mulan, what have you. Yeah, yeah, look at that open table XP and GP booster. Y'all gotta get in on that. So far, I've only seen uh, Drunk Pally and Radio Free Covenant. Be ashamed to waste all those best car bucks if uh, people aren't on the same page. Get in, get that, get that level, get that gold. So if you want some more information about the potential human that you're playing, especially if you're playing in Forgotten Realms, this is exactly what you need. Alignment. Am I bribing people now? <laughs> well, I think I have found a, uh, a good incentive to get people to at least hang out in the stream and lurk and uh, spend those Beskar bucks on things other than, I'll oh, change my voice right now to this. <laughs> nice community event right there that I think uh, is hopefully equally incentivizing to everybody. Alignment looks like the, uh, the bar doesn't uh, show up there either, but you've got the classic nine alignments, your lawfuls, your neutrals, your chaotics, mixed with your goods, neutrals, and evils. I'm just going to go classic lawful good for this human. Oh yeah, patient getting in on the booster. We need the booster. Languages, not as important. This is kind of a role play flavor, but... I do like to uh, complete every section of the sheet because I'm human. My character starts with common by default. I think uh, goblin. I'm going to just choose goblin randomly as my second understood language. They have what is called the variant human from uh, one of the extra compendium guides that we have, but uh, just keeping it simple, playing a standard human. I'm pretty sure when I get to the class phase here, people are going to know uh, what I'm selecting from there either. Or as well. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. So wisdom, uh, every attribute goes up by plus one if you are playing the classic human. And I think that's pretty effing cool. Plus one to all attributes. Uh, hells yeah. So proceeding 
Very inhuman. Is that part of the original PHP? That's uh, that's how uh, limited my knowledge is on character options. I tend to focus on the GM side of things because I like to be surprised when my players find new abilities or new uses for things. Not necessarily new rules that they can use to kind of be like, you can't do that, but like a cool new ability that they get for taking this subclass and getting to level such and such. I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that existed. I like to be surprised in that respect. Oh, that was a <clears throat> tearjerker cough right there. Bet y'all thought I was going with fighter. Wizard is my favorite. Classic wizard, not sorcerer, not warlock. Wizard. Skill profs. They automatically show what weapon proficiencies you begin with. So you can see how the character mancer is very helpful in just automatically assigning everything to your sheet. These, uh, these are things that you would have to kind of look through the physical books or the digital compendium and enter manually if we didn't have the character manager. Skill proficiencies, you get two of them for free for being a wizard. So keep in mind that when you choose your background, a lot of times you're going to get skill proficiencies as well. If you happen to double up on a skill proficiency because you took it here as part of your class and then also as part of your background, when you get to the review section here, it's going to give you a heads up like, hey, just so you know, you can take an extra skill because you have Arcana twice. So just just more examples of how this helps keep uh, some of us scatterbrain people together when uh, going through the character creation process. I'm just gonna take Arcana. <laughs> And, uh, <clears throat> and insight as uh, examples here. <clears throat> Goodness. Hack it up this past 35 days. All right. Cantrips, spellbook, ritual casting, arcane recovery equipment. So these are all the starting abilities for the wizard. First level, you know three cantrips of your choice from the wizard's spell list. Your spellbook is the repository of the wizard's spells you know, except for your cantrips, which are fixed in your mind. Ritual casting, arcane recovery. Uh, that is, when you finish a short rest, you can choose expended spell slots to recover. They can have a combined level that is equal to or less than uh, half your wizard level rounded up. None of the slots can be 6th level or higher. Alright. So that's all uh, good to go. We click next, and now it is time for the ability score method. Standard array, roll for stats, point by, or custom. All valid options however for our open table game we use the standard array and this makes it very simple you start off with these six attributes 15 14 13 12 10 8 and you assign them accordingly to whichever stat you want now obviously as a wizard intelligence is going to be uh, a premium for me but I am uh, I'm also on the rare occasion that I do craft a character, I am a fan of building towards the power rather than kind of uh, min-maxing it from the beginning. So I'm going to put my second highest in intelligence and maybe make this guy uh, a bit uh, persuasive. And let's say they're not the sharpest uh, when it comes to common sense. Normally intelligence and wisdom, you might kind of think go hand in hand, especially for uh, a mental type character like a wizard. But again, I, I kind of like to play 
against the strengths and towards the weaknesses a little bit and not making a useless character but somebody that can kind of be a little more balanced and not necessarily so one-sided of course how you make your character is entirely your own i'm not telling anybody how to make their character just demonstrating why i'm doing this the way i am because somebody would be like why didn't you put your 15 in intelligence now i want this character wait a minute that's a strength of 10 i meant to put the 10 in wisdom i don't know what i was thinking there I'm thinking I want this character to actually be a bit more physically fit <clears throat> than your typical wizard. So let's go 10, 12, or 13, 12, 8. So got some strength. Um, looks like the playlist ended. No. All right, hopefully that'll work. So there's the final attributes. And this all takes into account the plus one to each of them that I already get for being a human. So 14 strength, 13 dex, 9 con, 15 intelligence, 11 wisdom, 16 charisma. That's pretty, pretty good for a level one character and pretty well rounded. So if I need to jump into uh, the fracas, I've got uh, some strength and dex to hopefully allow me to avoid a few hits and dish out some damage. Con is not great, so I definitely am not going to be taking a lot of damage. And if I need to jump into the uh, the diplomacy pool in case the uh, the bard is out of action or our leader character can't attend that night, just uh, ways to make yourself uh, a little more spread. So here we are with background. Again, not showing any of the drop-down menu, but yeah, there's like 30 plus uh, different background options here. I'm thinking that doesn't make sense for this character. Guide of Salomnia from the Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Big fan of Dragonlance. A perfumer. I don't know why the fuck or, or parfumer. What the hell is that? What is a parfumer? Spend your youth. Apprentice among the cities, more reputable greenhouses, laboratories, and perfumeries. Okay. Study botany, chemistry, explore properties and interactions with fine crystal, rare metals, and magic. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Alright, so So I'm going to roll randomly for the character's personality traits. You can, of course, choose these as you wish. Just keep in mind, if you roll <coughs> randomly on these, it's going to populate them into the chat log here for everybody to see. So if you don't want everybody to know the details of your character, especially their innermost uh, goals and methodologies, maybe don't do this this way. <laughs> Deals, bonds, club one who's threatened by an organized gang of vicious halfling thugs. Oh! And a fly, I'm hard pressed to treat anyone who is not by my standards well schooled or well healed. <laughs> Alright. This background does not appear to have given me any additional skill proficiencies. I do get a herbalism kit or herbalism kit because there's a fucking H in it. Uh, leather satchel containing perfume recipes, research notes, chemical botanical samples, one die four metal or crystal shatterproof perfume bottles, set of fine clothes, silk purse containing ten gold. Eh, whatever. Standard equipment. Starting wealth. This is how I prefer, or no, I prefer class equipment. Rather than, uh, starting gold pieces. Back in the day when I was, uh had all had just hours to kind of invest in the character creation absolutely starting wealth get your money dig through every item kind of pick and choose what you're able to afford nowadays i'm just like all right i'll take the quarter staff i will take the component pouch i will take the scholar's pack and i get the additional equipment from the background for the perfumer as we just Went over a few moments ago. 
If you are not playing a spellcaster and you get to this section of the sheet, it is just going to say you don't know any magic and have you click the next button. Since I am playing a wizard, I do have a choice of cantrips here. And again, this includes all of our shared compendium. So not just the player handbook spells, green flame blade, uh, let's say sapping sting. I'm just kind of picking some randomly that I'm not necessarily familiar with off the top of my head. Uh, sword burst. So there's my three cantrips. Wizard level one spells. I get six of them, it appears. Rock Fall Ward. Yep, and it populates all the information here onto the side, so you can kind of look over it. You can also click the little information button right there, and it, it will replace whatever's in your description box here. Okay, so next spell, I do like Chromatic Orb. Bloodhound Gang. Just position. This is all just entirely random, just to kind of give examples of what you're going to be looking at <clears throat> here in the Roll20 Character Mancer for character creation. So there we go. Got the spells selected. Next, feats. A feat represents accomplishment, grit, determination, and expertise. It is the reward for hard work. You haven't really done that much yet. I am only level one, so perhaps someday. <laughs> Moving over to the bio, this is where you can change your character name from the all caps that I have set it for you. That's only really set that way for you to easily identify, that's my sheet. Age, height, weight, eyes, hair, skin color, all of that uh, editable, editable, if that's even a word, uh, by any of you the, once you get control of your character sheet. Review. This kind of covers everything that we've gone through. The only choice left is to press on or turn back. If you're editing an existing character, all your existing data will be lost into the void when you apply your changes. Yep. This all looks like what I got, so apply changes. Building character. And voila. Now I have a level 1 wizard named Daniel. see here all of the different information on your character sheet. Note that as you scroll over certain areas, they will highlight red. This indicates that you can click on that to roll that pertinent ability. Here's the difference between a strength check and a strength saving throw. Saving throws, you can see, are listed here just to the right of your attributes. If I tell you to roll a strength check, you just need to click your strength score. Voila. Strength saving throw, same deal. In this case, there's no mechanical difference. It's a plus two either way. And you can always hover over the dice results here to see exactly what was rolled and what modifiers were put into play. So 13 plus two, seven plus two. If somebody were to accidentally have rolled a strength save instead of a strength check in this instance, it's not a big deal. But sometimes your character, like an intelligence check or an intelligence save. Note that the intelligence check only gets a plus two, the intelligence save gets a plus four because it's adding your proficiency bonus into the calculation. Prof bonus right here. Uh, same <clears throat> same detail with any of your skills. If I tell you to roll Arcana, click your skill. It's always going to roll two dice just in case we realize after the fact you should have had advantage or disadvantage. You can note the skills you are uh, proficient in by the blue check mark. I encourage everybody, once you get your hands on your character sheet, click away. Don't worry about spamming up the chat log. That is not an issue at all. Uh, if we're in the middle of a session, it's a bit more of a, an annoyance, like, hey, we're trying to play, please don't spam the chat log, but even then, an accidental click will happen, no big deal. But while you're in the page by yourself, <coughs> feel free. Just click.
click away, learn what everything is. Uh, one editorial common that you'll see across all sections of the character sheets are this plus and this padlock. Let's say here for gear, for example, let's say our characters were robbed in the middle of the night and somebody stole my valuable research notes. All right, well, how do I get those off the character sheet? I could go over to here, click this little thing and kind of edit that and just there. But now you just have this blank box here. And sure, you can even unequip it so it's not counting against your total weight equipment. By the way, we don't hardly ever worry about total weight encumbrance for your character unless I look up and notice that you're carrying, for example, 10,000 gold pieces and you don't have a bag of holding. Then I'm going to be like, well, where are you keeping all 10,000 of those? <laughs> Click this padlock. See, now look at that. It adds 217 pounds because I added the uh, 10,000 gold and over-carrying capacity. Click the padlock. It opens up all of these for editorial purposes. The red hashtag button, click that. It deletes the item in hand. Likewise, the left side, you'll see the familiar reorganizational menu. So you can kind of move the parchment closer to the spellbook if you want. Or if for some reason the silk purse containing 10 gold is what you want at the top of your equipment list. Likewise, you can edit that. Just make sure you close the padlock when you're done so you don't accidentally come across later and misclick and delete something off your sheet. Same thing applies to your uh, character abilities. Attack blocks, tool proficiencies, languages that covers the core section of the character sheet pretty well the bio section is your primary creative template you want to write a character backstory that not everybody can see it goes here character appearance whether you're typing it out I don't think you can actually drag a picture into here so that's kind of sad. Uh, but there probably there there might just be a way to do that too. I'm just not uh, savvy on how that's done. Allies and organizations, additional features and traits, of course. Uh, customize any of these boxes to fit your need. If you don't have allies and organizations, then this can be your random jibber jabber box about uh, notes and plans that you have. Spells. Here's where we have our spell selection sheet. I don't think we've ever managed to get the auto, the automatic spell slot reduction uh, to work on these character sheets. So it is handy to like click on what spells you have memorized, for example. Like let's say this character's got a just position and rockfall ward. And then when you cast it, it's going to ask you at what level. Well, I can only cast level 1 spells. Submit. But it's still got the red thing there. Which I would have assumed to be... It would go away when you cast it. Maybe it appears when you cast it? Chromatic Orb. See, Chromatic Orb didn't get a red dot there. I have to manually click it. So, tracking your spells is still a bit more manual. That's, uh... Uh, just like in any RPG, like if you're playing a magic user character, it's probably because you've got a bit more experience in the system. Prepared spells, exactly. Yeah, that's how I've always kind of understood it <clears throat> to work. Your cog uh, settings gear section of the character sheet allows you to add all kinds of of options in case your character has halfling luck arcane fighter arcane rogue powerful build um, if you're adding a multi-class and it's not necessarily uh yeah like you can add them from here this is more of a manual addition than the uh, character mancer of course you can create a custom class and kind of add in some basic details to account for that 
If your character is for some reason expertise, I think bards and rogues might get that in certain skills. This is how you activate that so that you can get double your proficiency bonus. Uh, Jack of all trades, a bardic ability. If you have that, <clears throat> you click that and it uh, makes all of that appear accordingly. Initiative style, add dex tiebreaker to initiative. I do like to have this checked on all the time. For some reason, it just seems to kind of disappear uh, from occasion to occasion. But uh, yeah, it's, it's handy, especially just in that instance, if you got a lot of people that rolled the same exact thing on their initiatives. Always roll advantage, yes. Never whisper rolls, yes. For my monster sheets, I have it to always whisper rolls for some games. That kind of simulates a game master screen. I like auto roll damage and crit, so that way it's not a did I hit and now I have to roll a second set of dice. It's just all done at once. Show the global save modifier field. Uh, these can probably be unchecked unless there's some need for you to have that on there like barbarian rage or you're constantly under the effect of a guidance okay hero points can be useful if uh, you're playing that way we do use hero points for the enemy or game short long rest button is on so that's also handy ammo tracking similar to spell slot tracking it's one that kind of is hit or miss sometimes it's worked when I've clicked this on a lot of times it's just kind of broken the API, so I tend to just leave it off now, and people have to track their own spells. Alright, now here is perhaps the most important thing I'm going to show you for Roll20. The lowercase i that I have clicked up here is our shared compendium. You've already seen <clears throat> examples of that inside. seen examples of that already inside the character mancer while I was creating this character just through the different options but here is the shared compendium in all of its glory you can click on any category here some of them have nothing underneath it category DM screen no results found well that's handy so back that out conversely spells this is going to take a second, and now, goodness gracious, bodacious, just look at all these options. I like this heart-to-heart -heart spell. What does it do? You and the creature you touch remain stable and unconscious, yada yada, okay. Well, this is a lot of information to type over and copy onto the character sheet. That sucks really sucks to play a spellcaster because it just requires a lot more work but not necessarily so I am here at the heart to heart I am not clicking it to open it I'm clicking it to drag it look how it says accepting drop from compendium release and look at that heart to heart has now appeared as a level one spell I can check the information about it. It is a level one spell. All of the pertinent information has populated. I can click the talk bubble to populate the spell description into the chat log so that everybody can see the exact effects. Exactly, don't use the windows pop out for a uh, Using the compendium, that is one thing I discovered a long time ago. That's why I don't uh, use that option. I think that's in keyboard shortcuts, dice options, uh, and, uh, personalization. Character pop-out windows. If you have this selected, anytime you open a character sheet, it's going to create a new window for you. What I like to do is just keep that off, and it does... You'll, you'll hear me say it numerous times <clears throat> throughout any game, like, damn it, I have to keep opening and closing character sheets. It's primarily for this purpose, because it just makes the character mancer so much easier to access. Now, let's say I take the immolation spell. Same deal. 
And I don't have 5th level spells yet, but I do now have a 5th level... Uh, manually via upper left button on the character. Oh uh, yeah, must be a, uh, a different way to uh, the same end. I'm sure that's the case. This is, uh, I guess, just the method that I'm familiar with. And likewise, any spell that you have populated here, yep. Cast the spell, it does that damage. Here's the description. Likewise, anybody should be able to click on the show spell description here to see it pop into the chat log. <clears throat> and same, same basic principle with gear. So we've seen how spells can kind of uh, auto-populate their information onto the character sheet. Let's say that this character comes across a quarterstaff plus two. Same thing, drag it, drop it, and now look, right here on the character sheet, there's a plus two quarterstaff block that is already built in with all information that is applicable to your character. You can click the one-handed version of the quarterstaff and get a natural 20. You can click the two-handed version and get a 15. Um, so that's, that's the companion. That, I feel, is probably the, the handiest tool that we have here in Roll20, as far as just being able to quickly add items, add spells onto your character sheet without taking even minutes of time to do so. Likewise, if you want to look up backgrounds, that's all here. Um, I don't recommend players to uh, peruse the monster list, but some of you might be running your own games on the side and don't have access to uh, all of these monsters. And you might see something in here that you're like, this is a great addition for my game. It, we're, we're sharing this. Use it. Look through it. Obviously, don't have the monster sheet open on your side while you're fighting the monster on the board because then that just encourages metagaming of, hey, I thought this thing was vulnerable to such and such. Well, that's a quick way to piss this GM off. I'm, I'm generally pretty chill for the most part, but people who meta to that extent, I, I have a very uh, <clears throat> thin threshold of tolerance for. And yeah, I mean, just look at this. We're only in the Ds. I've already scrolled down like a dozen plus times. Everything is here that you need. And I think just one more little quick lesson here. Uh, I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this. I'm just not functioning at 100% today. I need a human wizard. This is my art library here. This is a tab that you will not see on the, the player side of things. Uh, I believe you'll just see the chat log, journal, uh, compendium, jukebox, and uh, the gear. The uh, collection tab right here you also won't see, which is just all kinds of miscellaneous stuff that I have here that I can add in as GM. Okay, so human wizard searching. So here are the applicable purchase options if I'm not happy with anything that I have in my library, but apparently all of these contain something of human wizard inside of them, although I have found that's not always the case. See? Elf avatar. How is that a human wizard? Human male wizard? Well, uh, Westy's very familiar with that one. <laughs> Fighter mage. Sorcerer. Demon kin sorcerer different human sorcerer with a different uh, type of fire magic. Cobalt. <laughs> Tiefling number nine. Steampunk sorcerer is very nice. I think we'll just go with uh, something basic like this. Not the best map to use for uh, illustration purposes, but this is the token that I have chosen. And again, this is all uh, GM purview here. This is just kind of uh, an additional tutorial <clears throat> in case you're running your own game and 
you're looking for a few tricks on uh, how to kind of expedite certain things, you drag the token that you've selected from your art library. This can be stuff that you've downloaded from the internet as well. I just, I, I support Roll20 very heavily, so that's how that goes. Scroll through your list until you find the character that you're looking for. That's me, Daniel. And you have your three different bars here. Blue, green, and red. Um, green tends to be hit points, especially for heroes. So alphabetically, HP. Five out of five. I use this to change the player permissions to where they can see the health bar. Not necessarily to where they can see the text overlay. I don't like players to be like, oh, they only have three hit points left. That's a bit too meta. And the blue bar, AC, note that it only uh, populates the first half, not the second half, because AC doesn't have a, a bar to drain from. It just is that number. Turn on the nameplate. Make sure that players can see the nameplate. I prefer the bar options to be bottom overlapping, although you can do above, top overlapping, or below. Uh, bottom overlapping has just worked out well for me. Likewise, if you have a character with an aura, say 10 foot circle, and you want it to be purple. Well, there we go. We now have a token for my character, five out of five hit points. If we click on it, we can see the 11 armor class. The purple aura will be an indicator to all other characters in that zone that they are uh, probably eligible for some kind of bonus. Update the default token. Dynamic lighting. If you are a plus or pro user, this is uh, right up there with the compendium as far as uh, one of the best features in Roll20. Make sure the character has vision. If they have night vision, turn it on. Limit field of vision. This I have only really done in Agent Orange. This actually restricts the token to where they can only see what's in front of them. So facing matters. And when we're talking about a zombie apocalypse, it's pretty fun to have to see the characters constantly turning their tokens to make sure that they're covering each other's backs. Because I've had zombies sneak up on players that were all just facing the right way. And I've had players tell me, this is dumb, this is stupid. And I'm like, you know what, dude? It's a horror game. And uh, there's certain certain tricks of the trade that the GM is going to use to uh, enhance that aspect. Now, this uh, human wizard probably don't have dark vision. Bright light, low light, assume this guy's carrying a torch, which is 20 feet of bright and 20 feet of dim, I believe. You can change the color of the light in case you have multiple people using torches and you want to kind of see whose line of sight is where. And that's only going to apply if you have a map with dynamic lighting enabled. So, I've got my character here. I'm going to go to um, the Grand Library at night, I guess. Okay, so this is a map with dynamic lighting. I go to the dynamic lighting crap. i got to move this thing out of the way again. I'm in the way, always in the way. There we go, hopefully nothing's going on down here. Okay. So the second one, I open the dynamic lighting box, and you can see all of the dynamic lighting that has been set. This essentially restricts vision and or movement. In the case of these dotted line walls with the arrows pointing outwards, it's, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're standing around up here, you've got clear line of sight to the chamber below and you can likewise attack through it because you can see. Conversely, if you're down here and looking up, all you're gonna see is a solid wall. Here's an example. I'm gonna bring Daniel onto the table. Oh, he's on the dynamic lighting layer. We want him on the token layer. And I'm in GM mode here, so it's a little tricky. But if you're in GM mode and you have the proper controls set, click the token, use Control L, and the token.
token does not have vision enabled. See? This is the problem I keep running into. Okay, vision. Oh, and I know exactly what happened. I didn't update the token after I added this part in. Okay, so back to here, update, there. All right, control L. This is what this character sees. So if a player's like, can my character see what's going on over here? I'll select that character, look through their eyes. And of course the dynamic lighting shifts. Every step these characters take, I'll be watching you. Right, right, okay. And then let's say we take this ladder up to level two. And just, okay, like that. The vision changes. Now I can see everything going on down below, whereas before I could not see anything up here. So cool little tricks <clears throat> with dynamic lighting. Definitely uh, worth it if you can swing the Plus or Pro account. Only if you're running your own game. If you're playing with a GM that already has a Plus or Pro account, there's no need for you to have one. Only if you're running your own games. Alright, so that's Compendium. That's Token Creation. How to set dynamic lighting. <clears throat> One other little quick thing here, I guess, that I kind of cover with everybody. Hold your token. And use the right clicker. Not necessarily every 5 feet like I'm doing here. You could do it every 25 feet. 15 feet depending on what works for you and once all done I'm still holding the left clicker here once all done release the clicker and then it's going to show that path traced out for all the other characters and the GM if I'm not the, if I'm not controlling this token as the GM it's helpful for me to see which squares the players have stepped into uh, if I have an API trap set up in that square it's not going to matter it's going to trigger automatically when they step into it but if it's a more manual addition then i'm i'm going to need to know where where you're stepping around and where you're walking <sighs> i don't think there is really anything else to cover here in this basic roll 20 tutorial i didn't really have anything uh kind of ready for it, just uh, how to use the character mancer, how to add things from the compendium, some uh, cool features like the ruler tool here, yeah you'll see this on the left taskbar here, this will help you measure approximate distances. Make sure that if you've used the ruler, once you're done go back up to the select icon, so that way when it's time for you to move your character, you're able to move them instead of doing this. I see this happen a lot where people are like, I can't move my guy. And it's like, yeah, you're on the, the ruler icon. Oh, there we go. Cool. That's, uh, that's going to conclude it here, friends. I'm going to just go back to enjoying the day off. I'll post this video in Roleplaying Unlimited Discord for anybody who has been asking for uh, assistance with the Roll20 platform, how to move your characters here and whatnot. Thanks for uh, joining in there, Drunk Pally. Appreciate it as always. Patient as well. Good job uh, boosting the open table gold piece and XP values there. Make sure to uh, spread that around the group. I have changed the Discord settings, so now players can tag at Roleplaying Unlimited, so hopefully that'll allow you to uh, get the word out to your fellow players a little easier, and it's not always just me tagging everybody. Hope you all have a great day. I'll probably be back at some point, uh, eh, like 50-50, back at some point today with uh, another Last of Us Part 2 stream. Take care, all. Are you with us? Beyond the line